I think the best way to explain the note harmonizer is just to go through a really quick and basic example. And what you would probably end up doing is what I'm showing you here, but then you would go in, bounce out the MIDI, and then maybe make some adjustments on your own. So it begins by having some kind of a harmonic source. And so this is gonna work just fine for that. We can see it's a chord progression. We can go in there and see that this is more or less in C minor. Okay? And then what I also have is this little bass line that I've created, but it's very basic. Right, hardly any variation. And I'd like a little bit of variation here. So maybe I don't really know the theory that well. Maybe I don't feel like going back and forth all that much if I'm gonna be drawing this in manually. So what can I do? Well, I could go and use the note harmonizer, set up the harmony source to be FM4 Enzo pad, okay? And I know that this is C minor, so I can just go ahead and put this pattern key in here to C. You do have the option of kind of snapping things more officially, but it does it does a very good job to be honest, but you could go in and add a diatonic transposer after the fact and snap it in if you're worried. Uh, many times you'll get the exact same result though either way. So you don't need to go like overboard with that uh, by any stretch of the imagination. So what we can do here is we can record the results of this and uh, listen to it as well. So here we go. <laughs> So we can see we're getting more variation. And all in all, it's done a pretty good job here. And this would definitely work when you play these guys against each other. It sounds totally fine, uh, as you could just hear when it was going through. If you hear any like odd wolf notes or something, you can always go in and change, or you can even add more variation yourself by just taking a few of these notes and moving things around. And in that case, if you were to just start moving things around at random, then you probably would want to throw on a diatonic transposer, right? You'd go in, you'd get rid of the note harmonizer, bring this up, and then turn on the diatonic transposer and experiment further. One thing you can see with these chords is that they're fairly staccato. They're really kind of choppy. And so what I ended up doing just as an experiment was I duplicated it and then I went in and I legatoed these. So you can select the notes, you can choose legato from either the drop down or I pinned it up here. And I want to see, well, is it gonna actually give me more variation if I go in and choose the legato mode? And well, we're gonna find out together here, but spoiler alert, it actually does. So what we would do here is go and choose the dummy instead, which is this one. And now that's what's gonna be working on, but you can still have these chords playing out. So this is not gonna make any sound at all. And it works totally like you would expect it to. So let's go ahead and play this back and uh, see the result we get. So you can already see that we're getting more variation here. And then if you really wanted to, you could always like duplicate all of these things out and maybe even like go back and forth between the two. So I could go in here. I don't need this dummy clip anymore. I don't need this clip anymore. I could even go in here and get rid of the note harmonizer. And now I could just grab this, bring it up, bring this one up, and we can listen to the two of these guys back to back. Maybe we'll have the more basic one at the start. And then we'd like, you know, bring in drums as well at like bar nine, whatever. And we can go ahead and listen. <laughs> Thank you. 